Okay, so we're going to crack on today with the rest of the Sci software. Sandra tests for the CPU, and we're also going to take a look at some Cinebench numbers as well. Okay, so if we take a look now to the image processing benchmark, and I've chucked a 5820K in, an i7 6700K, a 6600K, the i5, and a 40, i7 4770K. I've also chucked a AMD 8350 8 core in there as well, just for good measure. And on the two, the two different graphs that we can see from the two tests that it's run, there's one labelled edge detection and one labelled noise reduction. So we can see there again on the aggregated and multi threaded version of the test that it sits just behind our Xeon, sits just behind the 4770K, the I must have unhooked the uh, 5820K, there we go. The three Skylake CPUs seem to be close. Well, the two Skylake CPU, uh, CPUs, I don't think the 5820K isn't Skylake architecture, is it? I think it's um, previous architecture, I think that was, um, on X99. So... It's still 5th gen, I think. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's still not quite within the, um, you know, the ball the ballpark of those CPUs. Obviously, adding that 5820K has just um, got rid of our AMD CPU. You can't have... Um, so many um, boxes ticked and so many CPUs to compare you can only compare so many at once obviously we can see it there in um, in relation it's obviously um, you know not as good as the newer Skylake CPUs and the 5820k the 4770k is now which is now in yellow is better than it in the edge detection test in the noise reduction test it loses out to our Xeon we can see there our Xeon is actually a lot closer to um, the i7 6700k and, and a little bit more closer to the 5820k in the noise reduction tests our Xeon proves to be better than both the i5 6600K and the i7 4770K in the noise reduction part of the test as well so again it's interesting this uh, CPU that it can keep pace in certain aspects of, of certain tests with the newest processors but still lag behind in the in, in other parts of um, the tests again as we, if we've seen between the two different graphs uh, we saw that previously in the um, in the um, the multi I think it was the multi uh, the multi core test so it's um, it's certainly an odd an odd one um, in a lot of the um, the benchmarks, it keeps pace on some and um, falls falls back, uh, which is kind of what we would expect on others. So we'll move uh, forward on the um, the tests now. We're done with the image processing. If we just scroll through the um, the results there for the image processing down at the bottom bottom slowly. <laughs> take any numbers in that you might fancy taking in
So higher scores do mean better performance on the graph. Okay, so now if we take a look at the scientific analysis benchmark and I'm going to use a floating point of high double precision. It does allow you to choose a normal or single precision. Well, I'll choose the, uh, the more taxing of the two. With the high double precision. And again, we've got our i7-5820K. 6600k the i5 the i7 6700k again thrown into the mix alongside the 4770k now those are obviously modern generations uh, cpus so it's probably not fair um 2re 20 e5 2640 but it probably would be a better comparison where we could gauge from so we take a look obviously as um, expected you know it doesn't quite um, match the dizzy heights of the uh, of the newer architecture CPUs on the general matrix multiply or game test at the, the, for the graph at the top now with the bottom graph again interestingly again in the fast for Fourier transform graph we can see that it actually catches right up with um, all the rest of the CPUs it comes right up close to the 5820k and even closer to the i5 6600 which is in green here you can see there on the tests Again, it's close again to the 6700K, but it actually beats the um, 4770K. So that's um, so that's interesting. Something I, I do notice is that it does have um, a higher level a level three cache, the same as the uh, 5820K. Whereas the 6600K and 6700K have six six megabyte and eight megabyte um, respectively. Also, the 4770K only has eight megabytes, so that could be um, that might be something which uh, also affects this part of the particular test. fair that the uh, the 15 megabyte ones do uh, fare very well from the test obviously the the two skylake cpus do still beat the the xeon but there you have to you have to realize um just how fast they are clocked those cpus in comparison to our our measly um clock on the xeon so it's got to be something, um, that's what made me point to the level uh, 3 cache because there's got to be something that's uh, helping our Xeon along uh, in this particular test. So we just scroll through any numbers at the bottom.
So if we take a look at our multi-core efficiency test, we can see we got two graphs again for the two parts of the test. Intercore bandwidth and gigabit per second. Is that no, gigabyte per second? Two it's a capital boot. And intercore latency in nanoseconds. Now, if this is latency, then it's going to be, you know, the longer the bar is the slower time. So, the shorter the bar is the quickest time. So if we wait for it to cycle back around, again, we don't seem to have an RRI5 6600K in this, this list. So we, we do have the 6700K. So I've added an AMD FX 8350 into the mix. We can see that when we look at this intercore latency graph, that it still works out even though it's back uh, backwards you know the smallest um, level on the bar being the quick being the quickest and the, the longest obviously being the slowest that it's even though it's in reverse it still works out the same way that we would expect it to be the AMD FX 8350 lagging well behind um, and then the um, interestingly enough we can just wait for it to cycle back around that's the one thing that I don't, that wires me up about this program is the way it cycles through different modes for the uh, for the graph so you've got the quickest was actually the i7 4770k and the latency then this the 6700k followed by the 5820k and then ever so slightly behind is our Xeon 55.2 nanoseconds if we take a look at the top the intercore bandwidth you can see it's actually it's actually not that bad um, inefficiency compared to the other CPUs it's not that far behind at all the 58 behind the 5820k and it's you know there's, a, there's absolutely not much nothing much in it at all between the re5 2640 and the 6700k skylake cpu i actually best out over the 4770 in this test all the three, including our Xeon, uh, beat out the 4770K. Our AMD FX again is lagging behind and it's about half way up the graph as our Xeon is. So it's about as half as efficient in an intercore bandwidth as our Xeon, the 8350. Or you could think of it as being our oh, Xeon is, is twice as efficient with its intercore bandwidth as the AMD FX8350 is. So if we just take a, a scroll through at the bottom, any numbers that you might be interested in taking down. Okay, so if we move on to our stills screenshots from Cinebench, 
we can see we get a CPU score because that's all we're interested in at the minute is the CPU nothing to do with the graphical performance the CPU score of 770 for Xeon E5 2640 which is a fairly a fairly decent score considering you know i7 3770s were scoring around 662 here also if we, we just move this away we can see the result from my previous core i7 860 which only scored 433 you see that core i7 860 only scored around 433 in the same test so it's um it's an improvement over the 860 you know almost um almost twice as much you could say so for 29 29 pound um the cpu isn't isn't a particularly bad acquisition if you've already got um an x79 motherboard hanging around then um of course then it's um a real bargain obviously the money comes into play when buying the um the x not the x79 motherboard because they're not cheap they are still quite expensive if not as expensive as a brand new um z z170 or z270 board or even an x99 board um so that's where you're going to get your uh, your money but even then the the total cost of the system will be a lot less obviously it won't be quite as um powerful either but uh, it should sh surely be powerful enough for the next couple of years